Those are the okay, two those issues are in the schools. Okay, those are not the two issues. Okay, one. Okay, one of the issues that you're totally downplaying right now, not even mentioning, is that some school districts want to. Let's say a student comes out and identifies as transgender. School districts want to support that student and you know help him or her through that transition without ever having to notify the parents. I think there are issues there. Okay, and I do to- not begrudge parents for being concerned about that. Anna, you, you, I agree with you. But you're finding a sliver of an issue. That guy's not talking, he doesn't even know that. That all that guy knows and not, what 98% of them know is, I don't like them teaching about gay people in school, okay? And I don't like them saying, oh, we were racist back to slavery and Jim Crow and redlining. Come on, we know what it means. That's 98% of their efforts in schools. And then when he says open borders, there aren't actually open borders. What he's saying is, I don't like Latino immigrants, they don't look like me. I don't like them. That's my values. Anna Kasparian has been pissing off Young Turks fans now for quite a while as she's starting to leave the left and she's starting to expose the liar that Jan Uger is and the fact that he plays dumb on a lot of these situations. And he plays into his echo chamber that is the Young Turks fan base and they really don't like it. The Young Turks fans and a lot of leftists out there, most leftists I would say, just like to exist in an echo chamber. And anybody who tries to make them realize certain ideas that they have within that echo chamber are maybe not 100% correct, maybe wrong at times, they push out of the woke left. You should look at people like Joe Rogan and Russell Brand and people who are more liberal, are more left-leaning in their beliefs, but they're pushed out of the woke left and they're even called alt-right. Now they're calling Anna Kasparian alt-right for a lot of the things that she is saying in this video. Anna Kasparian does check Jank Uger again and he panics once again because because his co-host who he hired to continue to perpetuate this echo chamber that they've created is now starting to call him out and realize the brainwashing that Anna Kasparian has gone through. She's starting to realize that a lot of the things that she's been taught and told are completely wrong. Let's get into these clips here of Anna Kasparian destroying Jank Uger once again. Standing on the steps of the White House and murdered someone, he'd still vote for him. Same with you? Mm-hmm. How come? I don't know. I'm not wrong. He just got from the bottom. Trump can do no wrong. That was the dominant message among some Trump supporters who spoke to our very own Michael Shore at the former president's rally in Pickens, South Carolina over the weekend. Let's watch a little more of the reaction to Michael Shore's question. There are indictments, there are, there's audio tape of him with uh, classified documents, sharing them with people who weren't, um, didn't have that security clearance. Does any of that bother you? No, I think they've been after him so long that all of this is just a witch hunt like he described it. I don't think there's anything Trump's done wrong. I think that the desperate opposition is just after him. I mean, they started out, you know, and they've been after him eight different ways, and they're going to keep after him until they can get him in jail, I think. They they went after Richard Nixon, they went after Bill Clinton, and now the courts in several different states are finding different things about Trump. Is there anything that could happen with him indictment-wise that would say, all right, maybe this disqualifies him for president? Not for me. I'm with him to the finish. All right, thank you so much. He could stand on the front steps of the White House and and commit murder, and I'm with him. (laughs) No, that, that, that's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's a little crazy. Um, there are some things, and I know a lot of people might get mad at me for this. There's definitely some things that Trump could do to make me not want him to win, you know, and, and to say that there's nothing he could possibly do to get him to make, you know, to make you not support him, to make you not vote for him. It's pretty crazy. You know, people are capable of some pretty dark things. So that's a pretty crazy statement. But I know they're probably just being, you know, a little bit, they're probably being a little bit hyperbolic with the whole thing. These even might be paid actors to make the right look like idiots. Who knows? Who knows nowadays? So what I found interesting about that video is on one hand, when he's referring to the Trump indictments, he's kind of repeating what he's heard in right wing media about how there's no there there. You know, these indictments mean nothing. There's no evidence of him engaging in any wrongdoing. And I do think that that statement is the product of his media filter bubble. However, with that said, he also admits that if Trump committed murder, he would still support him. And so that goes against, you know, what my belief is. Technically, if he commits murder, that would probably make him more fit to be a US president, right? I mean, all the other ones have done it a lot. 
a lot more than just once. <laughs> is in regard to most Trump supporters who just, it's not that they support his criminality, it's just that they don't believe his criminality to be true. But in this particular case, clearly this supporter doesn't really care too much about crim potential criminality or if he literally committed murder, which blows my mind. And the guy before him and a lot more people. So let me, but let me give you both sides here because both, there's reality on, on both sides. So what do, what do I mean by that? So first of all, um, having seen a ton of these interacting with uh, Republicans outside of these interviews, but also seeing the whole breadth of the interviews that, that we do all the time. Uh, first of all, not all Republicans think that way. Um, and so it's easy to say, okay, they're all the same. And which, by the way, they think of us too, right? And so I have seen slightly more moderate Republicans. And certainly I've seen plenty of Republicans who would say, well, if he was on tape and he killed someone, yeah, that's too much, right? Over $100 million from Sheldon Adelson twice. And the Democrats never talk about it, why? Because they're also corrupt. And they don't wanna talk about the donors because they're swimming in donor money. But if you wanted to pound Trump, you'd pound him on his corruption. The guy who did anything and everything for Adelson, even gave his wife a Presidential Medal of Freedom. It's a joke, total joke, but those guys don't know it. Now the bad stuff, he has our values, does he? What is, what's your values? I mean, you don't mean family values, he's a raw dogging, Porn stars and they're like, and he says terrible things, does terrible things. You don't mean family values. So what values are you talking about? Oh, you know, uh, he uh, put, believes in putting parents in charge of children. That means I don't like gay people. I'm sorry, that's what no, it means. That means he wants to be able to. What? <laughs> Wait, hold up. Uh, what did he just say? Did Jenk just say? Wanting parents in charge of children means you hate gay people, <laughs> dude. Dude. These people have become caricatures of themselves. They're, they've become like South Park versions of themselves. Let me rewind that real quick. And he says terrible things, does terrible things. You don't mean family values. So what values are you talking about? Oh, you know, uh, he uh, put, believes in putting parents in charge of children. That means I don't like gay people. I'm sorry, that's what no, it means. That means he wants to be able to make a decision or help. A decision he about want, what? He doesn't want schools making decisions for about his what? kids. About gay people. It's and and racism, right? He doesn't want racism taught. Those are not about gay people, dude. It's even if you want to make it about like the gender stuff or the gay stuff, it's about telling your kid that they were assigned the wrong gender at birth and stuff like that. That's what I mean. Also, some parents might not want their children learning about gay people when they're four or five years old, and I think that's valid. I think I think that's a hundred percent valid. So it, it's the thing is, it's not like I'm saying that it's not about the gay people thing. But that's not the only thing. This this is just how things have been for the longest time. And just recently, it's been this thing where, oh, if you don't want the school to take control of your children and basically take the parents out of the equation and just have it be about the schools and what they decide is best for your children, that's recent. That that's a thing where if you don't like that, if you don't support that and go with it, then you just are this bigot and this homophobe, istophobe, whatever they want to call you, phobe. You know, that, that that's a recent thing. This is, it's normal, like, I, I don't understand that. I hope Anna Kasparian pushes back on that. The two issues, Anna, those are the okay, two those issues are in the schools. Okay, those are not the two issues, okay? One, okay, one of the issues that you're totally downplaying right now, not even mentioning, is that some school districts want to, let's say a student comes out and identifies as transgender, school districts want to support that student and you know help him or her through that transition without ever having to notify the parents. I think there are issues there, okay, and I do to, not begrudge parents for being concerned about that. Anna, you, you, I agree with you, but you are finding a sliver of an issue. That guy's not talking, he doesn't even know that. That All that guy knows, and not, what 98% of them know is, I don't like them teaching about gay people in school, okay? And I don't like them saying, oh, we were racist back to slavery and Jim Crow and redlining. Come on, we know what it means. That's 98% of their efforts in schools. And then when he says open borders, there aren't actually open borders. What he's saying is, I don't like Latino immigrants. They don't look like me. I don't like them. That's my values. Sorry, sorry, Republicans, I wish you were better. Not all of you, but a lot of you, the MAGA guys. That's why he says, as long as you're like us, I don't mind if you shoot someone on Fifth Avenue or in front of the White House. I don't mind because you're us and not them. Keep it real, and that's what you're seeing. And that's, by the way, also why they're never, never going to turn on him. Not all of them, but hardcore MAGA never, ever, ever, ever going to turn on Trump. Why? Because he is them. 
He is them. They see him, they're like, that guy's just as racist as I am. I like it. DeSantis has an ad out now about how much he hates gay people more than Trump does. And that's that might hurt him because they're like, oh, I thought Trump hated gay people as much as I do, right? So when he says values, he means the opposite of values. I watched all the tapes. All of them say he's like us, 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 us. They don't mean all of us. They mean, and when you ask them about the issues, they always go to, I don't like Latinos, I mean immigrants. I don't like gay people, I mean, I want parental control in schools. So that's the reality, you can see it all over the tapes. That is your interpretation. It's insanity, it's absolutely insanity that that's what you take out of this. I have to agree with Jenk and obviously with Anna too. Anybody with common sense, I think, would also agree that saying that if Trump went on the steps of the White House and murdered someone, like you would still vote for him. That's kind of crazy, depending on the situation. I mean, I guess like if the guy attacked him first or something, it'd be okay. But just saying like in general, even if he murders someone, like you're still gonna vote for him. That's pretty crazy. Um, but at the same time, Jenk is Jenk is. I mean, he's he's lost. I mean, he's Jenk Uger. You guys know he's he's absolutely insane. This is like, but he's becoming like a South Park version of himself, where he's saying, "Oh, what do these people mean by saying Donald Trump is like us? He means that he hates gay people too." It's like, no, idiot. They mean that he's not one of he's not a politician. He's a he's a business guy. He's like he talks as if he's a normal guy. That's what they mean. He's not one of the world elites like a lot of the other candidates are. He's not connected with those groups of people. He is hated by them. He is they're trying to throw him in jail constantly. That's why he's one of us because they don't like him. He's not part of that club. That's why he's one of us. Not because he hates gay people. Like what are you talking about, dude? I'm telling you, it's like a South Park episode. None of that was actually said. It is what you have taken out of his statements there. You're right. Like, yeah. Okay. okay. Right, and, and hey, so by the way, guys. That. Oh, by the way, guys, you guys all be the judge. Just okay. like anyone can watch the statements you made in regard to the story out of Israel today and say, uh -huh. you know, I, he said what he said, and I could either take what he said at face value or just put words in his mouth and call him an anti Semite. That would infuriate you, no? Anna, okay, look, we have a different interpretation. Okay, okay we have a different. I saw look, the tape. I don't agree. I've seen a hundred tapes. I tanks. don't agree with that guy. Let me be clear about that. Okay, but putting words in his mouth. I know a lot of you see channels like this one, and it probably makes you want to start your own channel, exposing the woke cult, and maybe even replace your job with it eventually. If you don't know, I'm actually a YouTube strategist, and I specialize in growing channels within this exact niche. I actually own a few other channels in this exact space that I never appear on, that I just handled the behind the scenes strategy for, that you probably watch pretty regularly, and I also work with a lot of larger names in the space to help them grow their channels. My main goal with this whole thing is to help equip good people with the skills that it takes to grow their channels, grow their voice, and expose the evils in the world. So if you want to know exactly how I grow my channels and my clients' channels so quickly, you can actually steal my exact strategy with the link to a YouTube video in the pinned comment on this video. I break everything down in that video in the pinned comment, so go check it out. Let's get back to the video. I think it's unnecessary. You can actually address what he said there without extrapolating and implying that he said something that he didn't actually say there. So what? what's the benign interpretation? He's worried about taking jobs when we have 3.7 unemployment, record unemployment. He's not worried about losing jobs. He's worried about losing you, his you culture. Straight up, you just straight up said, you just totally disregarded everything he said. No, I didn't, I went exactly on what he said. You boiled it down to, he's just racist. That's what you boiled it down because to. Because that is what he's saying. Okay, that's your interpretation. What of do you it? think, there's a lovely interpretation of open borders and he, these goddamn immigrants coming in? They genuinely think there are open borders. Okay, anyway, whatever. And then what's the open borders do? What does it do? What does it do? Does they, it take our jobs or does it doesn't take our jobs? They think drug traffickers and MS-13 are pouring into the country and causing crime and violence. I mean, they, they, they low-key are, <laughs> you know? Like, this isn't some conspiracy theory we're seeing like, there's a lot of horror stories that come out with innocent people who are just biking down the street, get murdered, and all of a sudden it comes out, oh, they came in through the through the border illegally, by the way. But we're not allowed to call them illegal immigrants. We gotta call them, I don't even know what the hell we gotta call them anymore, according to the borders are Kamala Harris. Anyway, Anna Kasparian can be based at times. It's unfortunate that she doesn't she does she's not like this all the time. I see that she's starting to wake up a little bit, and I wish she would just go all the way and just wake up completely and maybe like leave the Young Turks and start her own thing and just be entirely based. But uh, you know, maybe she's under contract or something, so she can't go all the way right now. But let me know in the comments what you think about this debate here with Anna Kasparian and Jenk Uger, with Anna Kasparian checking Jenk Uger live. I thought it was, you know, it's, it's pretty based. Let me know in the comments what you think about this whole Anna Kasparian versus Jenk Uger on the Young Turks situation.